All right, well, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, been on Kangaroo Island, I'm back in the studio. Now if you've been following my Instagram page, you'll notice that I've been painting, and I've been posting quite a lot of little beautiful Kangaroo Island stuff. That's because I've been to Kangaroo Island recently, can't get enough of the place. Now I'm back in the studio, cannot wait to get stuck into a massive Belgian linen. All right, so as usual, I've got tons of oil paint, Viridian Green, Magenta, Phalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Arousal and Crimson, a nice red, yellow ochre, buckets of white, a couple of the cabs yellow and orange. That should be enough. Now let's get for the biggest differences. We'll start blocking in the darks first and work our way out from there. All right, what I might actually do is I'll start off with some, get a bit of titanium white, Phalo Blue. I'm just gonna do, just gonna do a little bit of draftsmanship, just a little bit to get me going and then I'll do the rest, okay. Halo blue and white. Right now, the first mark will be around about here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing today, that's good. That'll come across. Now that tape's gonna come off soon, I'll take that off soon, but I'll just put a few marks in, that'll come to about there. And spin across there. All right, starting to feel the picture, starting to warm up a little. I'll go down there. I'm going to be about there. Everything is just suggested at the moment. Just feeling my way with the composition. Now, oh, I've painted those little ones that kept me right in tune for painting a more major size work. Put a bit of a little, I've got that there, horizon line. I've taped the horizon line, I've got that level. So everything's great there. Just trying to work out where I'm going to put this one. I'm going to put it on here. And that one will come to there. This is important to get the shapes right at the start before you get too carried away. Yeah, it's letting a nice lead in through this way. I should get some more ultramarine blue. Might go for a bit of magenta and burn sienna. I'm trying to get a sort of neutral dark colour. Keep on going with those blues, a bit more white. So what I'm doing is I'm keying down the value so the blue is not super intense. Just keep off a bit, a bit more magenta, so it's a bit of more magenta blue dominant dominance going on. But it's not the full chromatic saturation. Alright, now this will be well, a fairly dark horizon. That'll make That'll make the surf really pop against it. I'll just come across here. This is a rather large canvas, probably the largest I've done in this studio. Put that there. Be the largest I've done in this studio, so no, just enough room to move around. So just get a bit of Viridian Green while I'm here on white. White and Viridian Green. Just mix that in on the edge here because I'm trying to introduce some shallower water through there. Like so. A little bit of that through here. It's going on nice. More of that over here. Oh, I can hardly reach over this side because I've got a table behind me. That's okay, it's all working out. All right, get that tape off. There we go, look at that. If I can get this all in the bin without getting it all over me, we'll be good as gold. That's looking lovely, absolutely beautiful there, so we'll go with that. Now, I may just get a bit more of that lighter value. Just gonna pick out the very last bit of rocky outcrop that comes right out to about here somewhere. And that shoots in there. Just gotta get these early phases correct before we lock her in. That'll be there. Yep, that's probably about right. 
Alright. Let's go for some darkest darks. So, Alright, we'll go for some Lizzie and Crimson, Burnt Sienna, a bit of Ultramarine Blue, that'll make a good dark. More Ultramarine Blue. Okay, let's establish a few darks now. There's something dark there, a bit more red dominant, so the red will glow through later on if I pull back. That's what happens when you've got a white undertone. You put some nice colours on, translucent colours, and when you pull back to them, if you scrape the palette knife and go back to them, you can get this beautiful translucent effect like a watercolour, and it just glows then. Keep on going. A bit more burnt sienna. It's incredible. Ultramarine blue. Too carried away, just want to get a basic feel, that'll be there. That'll be there. I if land will jut out there somewhere. There we go. Bit of a rocky island out there. Another bit of a one over there. Some shadows here on the edge of the headland. Just pick that out a bit better while we're here now. It'll come that way a little more, down that way, and out like that. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with the shapes that are going on. We've got a nice feel and flow to the composition, a lead in here to a nice focal point going off into the distance. There'll be a lot of distance in this painting. I reckon the thing we do now is get some sky in, right? So, let's go for some ultramarine blue. Any more of that white, more of that magenta or reds, any sort of red, you can use the magenta. We can use red, as long as it's mixing with the blue. The burnt sienna to grey off, just want to get a nice neutral colour. I want to paint a bit of a coastal haze on the horizon, so plenty of mixing. Quite a neutral grey there, there's not a lot of chromatic saturation left, but that's pretty good because that'll really give the feeling of reality. I like to use strong colours in my paintings, but at the same time, if you use a lot of the other neutral colours, it looks more realistic than going just too super strong everywhere. Okay, so I'm leaving a bit of a gap there because there's some nice headlands going off into the never never there. That'll be headland coming down there. And then that'll sort of jut along down here. Give us some random shape so it's the headlands wobbling up and down, never repeating itself. As with nature, just a lovely pleasing pattern. Not many along those lines, a bit more. Take it up a little bit higher. There's a bit of dark cloud chuffing around up a bit higher. It's about right. Go up to the next layer in a minute. I'll just stand back and have a look, see what I reckon. Okay, well that's looking good. Let's go for the next layer. We'll go for a bit of yellow oak with that. Make it ever so slightly more greenish. Plenty of white again. More of the blues. Oh no! <laughs> Paint then. Went flying across the room, hit the wall, about three metres away. Better clean that up. Anyway, I haven't got time for that now, let's get stuck into this. Yeah, the knife bent backwards. Love to see that in slow motion. The knife bent backwards and flicked, released. It's all part of it. Yeah. For some more blues now, straight up. Less of the oak is more of the blues. And I'll just be careful I don't bend the knife back again and flick it across the room again. So that's a bit cleaner and a bit cleaner colour. A bit more of the straight blues and white rather than having too much of the oak is mixed in. There's some high level cloud chuffing around too in this particular piece, or there will be. So I will get onto that. The 
first let's just get these blues in. Plenty of paint on it, lash it on. Lovely stuff, look at that. Getting a lot of paint on the canvas to work with, well, Belgian linen in this particular instance. Okay. What fun it is to be painting such a big picture. I'll have a look and then I'll end up getting to the next layer of colours. Looks about right. Let's get stuck into the next one. Ultramarine blue. I've already run out of ultramarine blue. I'm going to have to put some more on. It's a bit wide in value, I think. So, well, no, that's about right. I'll put some of that on before I go up to the next layer. Stick some of that on. So that's more of a red blue. But down here is more of the green blues. More of a red boy, and then so on, so on. Cooler colours, warmer into the reds. Get some more ultramarine blue. There we go. Here's one of these cartridges. Next layer, ultramarine blue. Bit of magenta, white. Kind of just, oh jeepers, it's happened again. I'm flicking paint everywhere, Jock. <laughs> Gotta slow down. No, it's too much fun. Too much fun to be thrashing around. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. Yep. Stick that on. Lovely, look at that go on. It's going on beautifully. Fantastic stuff, eh? It's going on well. Let me just have a look. It's going good. Except there's a paint all around the room. Getting sprayed everywhere, whoops. Whoopsie, anyway. A bit more white, a bit more magenta. Ultramarine blue. Slightly darker, slightly less white this time, so what do we got? Yeah, it's a slightly darker value. Stick it up there nice and neat. Up to the edges. I might end up using a little bit of brush in this painting. I find with the seascapes quite often a little bit of brush to make the water and the sky slightly softer works well. And uh, seems to work a treat because it really contrasts against the cliffs and chunky rocks and whatever. Contrast in the painting is always the way to go, isn't it? Gives you a more dramatic effect. Get some of that paint, put it over there. Buttery, buttery paint. Up to the edges. That's going all right. Okay. All right, we're doing well there. Now, let's start putting some of the weed in on the rocks and whatever else just to get that blocked in. So we'll go for some burnt sienna. Here's a bit of that turquoise and whatever else is there. Yellow oak and burnt sienna is very dominant. A bit of blue to knock it back a bit, so it's not quite too intense. Let me just have a look what I've got. Not bad. A bit more yellow oak, maybe. Half mix. Let's get a feel. It'll be there. That one's going to jut through there. Break it up, leave a lot of the white showing through because there's going to be a lot of surf breaking over that area. So, a bit more blue in that. Maybe the oak is. Bit more blue, maybe so it's like the, the light's reflecting this damp rock. You may have a bit of 
sky reflecting into it and also sends it back off into the distance. There we go, that's looking good. Alright. That's going to be there. It's going to be there. More yellow ochre, more burnt sienna. We're going to have here, beautiful. Put that on. Lovely big chunk of rock there. More yellow ochre, more burnt sienna. It's all happening, it's all going on. That can be in here. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Yep. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Such a change painting these massive paintings as opposed to painting a six by six inch this big with little tiny palette knives. I'll thrash the paint on like this, I must admit. I do like thrashing the paint on. A bit more of the blues. More of the yellow ochre and white to lighten that value with the yellow ochre now. Gonna run, a yellow, run out of yellow ochre, I can see it. Oh, look at that chunky, that's going on thick. Such a nice contrast to what the water's gonna be. Burn sienna, thrash it on. Chunk, chunk, chunky style. back here there's gonna be a bit this headland jumps out here that jumps up there let me have a look eh run out of yellow ochre so let's get back into it run out of yellow ochre you little ripper fantastic stuff art spectrum cartridges good stuff all right back into it let's paint that nice headland jutting out there we we'll use the yellow wafers and burnt sanders again. I might use a twang of magenta. Throw it into there. White and magenta. Just to knock it back a bit. The saturation of that stuff there is not quite as strong as the foreground, so knock it back a bit with white, blue and magenta thrown into that same sort of similar sort of mix. kind of grey chunks of sandstone rock here or whatever it is. A bit of a reef coming out here. Stick that in. Oh no matter, I go back to a dark tone. That's the beauty of the palette knife. You can chop and change very easily. Burn sienna, lizardine, crimson, ultramarine blue. Stick a few darks in here and in there. Some of the shadows on that cliff. Just a few subtle ones, not too many. Maybe a couple of subtle ones thrown in here. I believe to knock it back a bit. Not quite as strong because it is slightly further away. You want to get that feeling of three dimensional depth. Just a few bits of shadows here and there. All right, that's coming along. Let's stand back and have a look. See what I reckon. Okay, all coming along now. Let's get some of that water in, eh? Pretty and green, white, 
doesn't matter if you use a few of the other things mixed in here because it's not going to be the absolutely pure Viridian Green. A bit of blue, phthalo blue maybe with the Viridian Green. White, and phthalo blue. I'll just see what I've got first. That's nice. The thing about the Kangaroo Island water is the sand on the bottom. The colour of the water is beautiful because Got the sand on the bottom of the ocean there. It's very white, and it seems to affect more green, green, and flower blue. It affects the colour of the water. <clears throat> Some of the areas been painting with coastal. It's got more of an olive, sandy colour. When I mean olive, I don't mean olive. I mean more of a sort of a beige, rich, ochery, sandy colour. I guess you could say, and that shines through the water and gives those more of an olive green to the waves and, and the shallows. But when you've got white sand, it tends to make things look real turquoise with a slight blue twang. Which is great, because that does look beautiful. I'll stick that over there. And that's just a classic signature of KI having that really high key turquoise. Particularly in summer, when the sun's shining directly overhead. Really lights at the bottom, swings up back in and the water's a beautiful colour. In saying all that, I'm going to go for a bit more yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Because over here, we're getting some reflections there into here, which has made it more of the burnt sienna and ochres. You've just got to keep varying things. So much to be done. I'm going to speed it up a bit, stop talking and start working a bit more. A bit more burnt sienna. Let's get it on. Burn Sienna Yellow Ochre. Burn Sienna. Pretty in green, white. It's going to mix up plenty of paint because it's a big canvas. You know, it's going to... Burn Sienna Yellow Ochre. It's pretty in green. In this foreground area, I don't want so much attention drawn to this area, so I can use lower key colours so it doesn't draw the eye so much into it. And then up here you go brighter. Just put a bit of that in. Mix that with that. Let's work out what we're going to do. Try and give the flow. So much to paint. White, yellow ochre, green sienna, pretty and green. Just got to mix up a massive brew here. It's all happening. It just needs to be a bit richer, so let's go from more Viridian Green, Yellow Ochre. Use the fast action movement to give the feeling of the ocean thrashing around. Mixing that with that, so they're not staring at each other. A bit of a blend. Just going to stand back for a minute, see if I've got the right colour combinations going on. It's coming along nice. Let's get some burnt sienna going. There we go. A bit more burnt sienna. Pretty and green. I've only got it in a tube this time, so we'll do that. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Pretty and green, yellow ochre, green sienna, white, more pretty and green. What's happening here? That goes in there. Goes there. Just get stuff in this corner here. Fill up that corner. I can hardly reach that corner. Well, I'm out, I'm going to change tack. Go for some reds and some blues. Because down here when this weed, the weed on the rock gets underwater, more magentas, more of the blues. 
when the rock goes underwater, it kind of goes a, a sort of colour. Kind of a mauve. So, if you want to give the feeling of rocks under the water, so you're seeing through, you need to put that nice mauve colour in, like through here. Through there. Where else? Over here. A little bit out that way. Bit of some over here, maybe. Ultramarine blue, magenta. Slash a little bit over here. Okay. All right, that's all coming along great. Just go for a bit more of the darks again. More using crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And just stick a few more of the darks in here. Like that. And a little bit in there. All right. Now what have we got? Okay. Brilliant green, same way blue, white. Working, filling in this. Off to the edge there. Bring that hoodie and green more into this water so the whole lot, the mixtures of the two don't just stare at each other. Gonna be a bit of surf there, but at the same time, a bit more white, brilliant green, yellow blue, more white to lighten that value. These waves, as they stand up, a real high key colour against that dark backdrop that I put. The dark water here, I think the waves are real high key colour. The contrast against it. Well, that's a lot of stuff blocked in, but now what I want to do is just work on a little bit more of this weed, straight yellow open and white, really beautiful high key rich colour. Some of the weed over here is very strong saturation. Yellow open and white. That's a lovely high key. White, yellow ochre. Pull some through a bit wider, lighter value. What we got here? Is that there? Some here. Some random marks. Mm -hmm. More blue sienna. There's always so much to do on these big pickies. So we'll go back into here and from all of that burnt sienna, fill that in. High key colour here. Do it. So then I'll get stuck into the white as in the surf. Can't wait to put that in. I'll start to stick the surf in. A little bit of beach sand over there. Put some colour in the sky as in a few clouds where those white patches are. So much to do. Start off with the beach sand, I reckon. We'll go for some white. Big chunk of white there. We'll stick that there in a nice clean spot. 
a bit of high key candy yellow. Let's just have a look just here somewhere. I'll stick some sand in there. Bits of sand up here on the edge. I might just tear it down a little bit with some nose so it's a little bit more of a grey. So much white. Save our pure white. Oh, there's some headland jutting out there. There yeah, can be a bit of a headland there, that's nice. Okay. Now, what we've got is. Sending it back in the distance. We've got some nice cliff faces going off here where I left that white at the skyline. Just going to send it off a bit with a few of the blues into that mix. And magentas. Let's see what I've got, eh? A bit more blue, maybe. So it's still definitely there. Could go with a bit more ochre dominant, so I'll just throw a tiny bit of burnt sienna in. You still want to have the feeling of the cliff kind of ochre colours, but you want it to be receded and drop away. Once it goes off into the never never. Further and further. Get more blue as they go back. Not quite so much white, so it sort of fades away into the nothingness. There's more atmosphere starts to take over. Yep. Got some strong blue there, I don't know where that came from. Let's put that in. It just goes on forever. Might actually get a small knife out in a minute. This is a pretty clumsy thing. Alright, now let's get some of this cloud colouring and we'll use white, more magentas, more burnt siennas, a bit more burnt sienna, making it up as I go. Let's just have a look, it's a key down colour for the high level cloud. Don't want it to be anywhere near white because it's off in the distance, we're saving our whites for the accents. I'll stick this high level cloud up there. Shoot it through here. A little bit more yellow ochre in it. Up here. Get rid of the white, like I said. I'm just going to stand back and see if I got the values right before I go any further. Going to get the big brush out, soften that sky up. All right. So there's no paint on the brush currently. We're just going to go to the edges, nice and neat. For one, get that edge all nice and neat. Then. All through, plenty of distance. So from that, bit of paper towel because I picked up some of that dark horizon now. I don't want too much of that. I want clean, high key colours at the moment. Let's just go down through there. Pull back that way. All up it clean. Okay. Yeah, it's a great way to get softness. 
We can use the knife again later, but at the moment we're just going to do some good blending. It's a great way to blend with the brush and it's a good contrast against the palette knife work through here. Flash the paint on. Get that sky beautifully blended. So all those colours that I put on previously are not staring at each other, they've blended nicely together. Working my way slowly to the top. That's good. Right up to the edge is nice and neat like that. Lovely stuff. Fill it all in. Nice and neat on the edges. Good random marks, plenty of energy. Let's have a look what we've got, eh? Well, that did quite a lot in it, describing the feeling of the sky. Just get this one for a minute. What I might do now is, while we're on that thing, let's just clean up some of this water now. Let's just pull through. Pull through, soften that water off. <laughs> there we go, almost lost that bit of paper. Take it to the edges, lovely. I'll use a knife again later on, I'm just getting a general feel of things thrashing around and softened up a bit with the brush. I can also get the paint into the edges easier if you can see that, yep, I think you can. Down here. Get those edges all painted up nice. So you can on the stretched linen, you don't have to frame it. A lot of people, other countries, I don't know really exactly, you can leave a comment if you want, but Australia really likes their pictures just on the stretcher bars unframed quite often. Some people have a floating frame, I guess, but uh, it's quite good just to leave it like that. That's why it's neat, good to go neat on the edges. So if they want to leave it unframed, there's no worries. A little bit more white thrown in, won't anyone? We're going to get into the surf now, so we need buckets of white. Let's get into the surf, eh? Get that white. I don't matter if it's got a few other mixtures thrown in at the moment. Ooh, where are we going to go? Let's put some in. White. Some random bits through here. around there. More pure white. Disturbed water. Fast actions, fast motions to give the feeling of movement. There's all white here already, that's the, the prime canvas showing through. Just going to put some bulk of paint on now because there's no paint there. Might look good on the camera, but to me it looks like when I'm here, standing for the subject, looks like it needs a bit of actual white laid on. Get some white, pure big chunks of white. Just going to start picking out some of the broken surf on here. Just a bit nice. Plenty of paint. There's plenty of paint on there. Little big chunks of paint as it's all. Bursting over the headland there, or over the, the reef. More 
more pure white thrown in here. Real thick, chunky style. I really put it on thick. Have a bit of fun. Get the brush again. It's all starting to happen. I'll get that brush and maybe just soften this edge a bit. Pull through, wipe that paint off. Oh, we dropped that one. Take the sky down to it. Pull through. All right, that's nice high level cloud, but I'm going to put a little bit of low level coastal scud, so I just want a few more of the blues. It's dark and yellow here, darken off. Bit of brown. That's the feeling of the low level cloud chuffing along through here. So you've got two different layers of cloud. You got that high level cloud beautiful off in the distance and then just up really low this coastal scud with the breeze just getting a bit of moisture in the air and just sort of condensing it. Just keep moving around, never quite finish anything. Just, every time you see something else just go and do it before you finish the next thing. So I'm going for some darks here. You can have some really clean rocks. Some really clean shadow just through here. There we go. Mm, coming along, coming along. All right, well, things are starting to get there. We're getting, you know, some nice colours through here. We've got the distance recession. Added a few more things here. A bit more chunky style up close. Thin, flat water to really make it nice and smooth, contrasting dramatically with the chunks of these cliff faces. I think I need a little bit more of a highlight in there, so I'll just grab a little bit of this. Just be careful. Where do I want it? Any in there, some of those cliffs in the distance just standing up a bit. All right, well, I'm back after a tea break, cup of tea. Had it in the studio room. I've moved it into a new light. I've moved it into the gallery. Two reasons. One, I want to get my mind off the job, go have a cup of tea and think about other things. Two, bring it into a different light because the studio's got more intense light. Bring it into the gallery light. It's a fresh way of seeing it. So when your mind's completely off and you come back and you view the painting in a new room, it's always a great way to see if there's anything you need to do because you're literally seeing it in a fresh light. All right, <clears throat> pretty happy with what's going on. Just done a few tiny little touches here and there and a bit of this and that and she all seems to be starting to sing now. Now you saw with the original impression the concept of this painting was 
the movement of the water. I really wanted to capture that feeling of movement. When you're out there in nature looking around down the beach, the surf's always changing and moving and you get that essence when you're there. You can smell the sea salt, you can feel the energy and the movement. If you take a photo and then just come home and copy it literally, quite often it can freeze up and become stagnant and you do not want that. Anyway, so by thrashing the paint around a lot with the big chunky knife, keeping movement and trying to keep Keep painting within a certain sort of time limit. Don't give yourself days and days to paint a picture. If you think, right, I've only got a certain set time to paint it, you're more likely to thrash the paint around to try and get it done in time. And that gives you that kind of shorthand and that energy in your work. All right, so what we've got here is you saw me key down the sky, quite low key, nowhere near white, and the idea of that was to push it away and to send it into a three-dimensional world so this headband and whatever else goes off into the distance so you've got that great contrast between near and far. The foreground's right up in your face and the distance back. Save the pure whites and the biggest white mark, big chunk like that, right here for the grand crescendo. Even the foreground itself is also slightly keyed down with the surf and I did that for two reasons. One, so it doesn't compete with the main subject and two, because I wanted to make it contrasting again against the rugged surf here somewhere with almost looks a little bit uninviting, it's a little bit too rough, to this beautiful little tranquil waterhole here, you almost feel like you want to jump in. So that's another great contrast. The water itself is quite smooth and flat and that's contrasting dramatically with these thick, chunky marks on the reef and the weeds. On the whole, pretty happy, got some nice warm and cool colour concepts. Through here I've got a very vibrant mark as the wave breaks over, that's probably the biggest white mark I guess you could say. You've got everything else is kind of smaller marks and this is just like one big accent of white, boom. So your eyes get led into that and then led after that through the rest of the picture. Pretty happy with what's going on. Why don't we get the camera off now, come buzzing right in. You guys can have a look and see what you think. All right, thank you.